guys, Knife Detector here. I hope you guys are having a blessed day so far. And I tell you what, uh, I got another entry into this short uh, series of videos I've been making on inexpensive, affordable knives, uh, pocket knives, usually traditional. Uh, they are frost knives or they're knives by frost that are just traditional and they're very inexpensive, you know, because like I mentioned in other videos, there's something out there for everyone, right? There's something that tickles your fancy in the knife uh, collecting hobby. And if you look hard enough, you will find it. Seek and you shall find, my friends. And this is another example. Let me tell you the tale of the knife. Uh, I'm going to pr tr probably keep these next couple of videos short uh, on these frost knives uh, just because I want to get them moving and get them done quickly because I have so many other knife videos to, to make, right? So this is a white tail cutlery handmade knife and to me that means it was made in Pakistan it's got this uh, I've heard it called pekka wood but it's like a laminate type of wood and I've also heard it called uh, frost wood as well I don't know the difference or maybe just frost wood is what they call it uh, when it's a type of a laminate wood uh, because it's by frost so in any case look at this this is a four blade canoe guys it's a four blade canoe let me tell you the story of this knife I'd seen that knife uh, oh I'd say this past December, and so I, I, I saw it for 20 bucks at a pawn shop, and then I was intrigued because it had four blades, but I picked it up, and I was kind of, you know, a little bit dismayed because, well, the blades have a teeny little bit of play. It's not terrible, but there's a little bit of play. This is probably the worst, and the thing is, is that it had a little bit of play. I didn't want to pay what they were asking, which was 20 bucks, but because I had never seen another frost knife that's like a four-blade canoe, a uh, thick canoe like this, heavy canoe like this, I, I, I kind of wanted it, you know, I kind of wanted it because it was very unique, and, and so I told myself, self, you know, I don't want it $20 bad, but I might pay $15, I, maybe I wanted $15 bad, you know, so I decided to wait, and uh, they told me, I asked if they could lower the price, and they said, no, nah, we can't do that right now, man, we just took it out, dude, we got to wait on that, I'm like, all right, so I'll come back in a month boom came back in another month and then they said well you know it's still too early you know probably because 20 bucks was pretty low as it was nobody was biting on this knife it just was too weird people didn't want it whoever had this knife before me was using it as a work knife but it's pretty scratched up i have a feeling they just had this rattling around in their glove box or their toolbox and they just had it rattling around in there right so finally make a long story short i go back after a couple of months and then uh, I said, look, I've already checked on this two or three times, I said. Um, you keep saying that it's too early to lower the price. Is it too early to lower the price now? Right. And by now, the girl remembers me. She goes to talk to her manager. Next thing you know, they're like, you can have it for 13 bucks. I'm like, I'll take it for 13. I, that's exactly the number I had in mind, which was not true. I was willing to pay 15, but they said 13. So I was like, yes. So I paid 13 smackers for this bad boy. I don't think it's too bad. I paid $13 for this. For this frost knife, look how thick this thing is. Look at that huge, those huge chunks of brass liners in there. Look at that laminate. I mean, the tolerances could be slightly better, but I mean, really, this is just such a unique knife, right? Let's close some of these blades. Look at these little stubby blades. Got a lot of use. Snap. Notice how the blades don't close all the way. And it doesn't really matter because when you close the big blades, they just kind of like are just below the big blades, the big blades, so you don't cut yourself. But yeah, look at that. That is one thick canoe. If you put this in your pocket, it will weigh you down. It will weigh your pants down, my friends. You don't want to do that with shorts. Uh, believe me. Uh, unless, you know, you want to drop your shorts. Okay, so this is about uh, a little over four inches. Maybe four and an eighth inches long. Not too bad. Let's weigh this bad boy. See how heavy this thing is. Take my trusty scale here that... I use for my wife without her knowing. Let's see. If she watched my videos, she know it's her own fault. 6.7 ounces. That puts it really close to a buck 110. You guys know a buck 110 is like 7.2 to 7.5, depending on how old it is, how much metal's in there. But yeah, look at that. 6.7 ounces. This is kind of heavy of a knife, right? Now, why did I get this knife? Well, I got this knife because I wanted to show you guys that this stuff is out there. I got this knife also because it's pretty unique, you know. I when I see something unique like this, 
to me, uniqueness has value. It may not be monetary value, but it may be a curious value or just a historical value or the fact that somebody uh, made this by hand and uh, put their genius, their time, their, their blood, sweat, and tears into making something like this. And uh, I see that and I appreciate that. Okay, guys, so this has been another one of those mini-series installments on, on these uh, inexpensive knives. Uh, this is a Frosty. You know, it's a Frosty with some pretty uh, wood. It kind of looks like bird plumes right here. you got this emblem right here that looks like a stag, I believe. Because after all, it is white tail cutlery. And I believe white tail cutlery is a uh, frost brand. And it says handmade. And I don't recall if I saw Pakistan anywhere, but, you know, come on. I'm pretty sure this is a Pakistan knife. All right, guys. So without further ado, we're going to bring this video to a close. This has been another edition of Knife Detector. Uh, if you get bored, check out my other videos. My usual time for making videos is Mondays at 12 a.m. and Fridays starting at 12 a.m. My videos will come out. I do that because I know there's a bunch of you night owls out there. And uh, also because I want to, uh, you know, make a video, have a video come out when there's not a lot of traffic on there so that, you know, you have choices. I know you have choices. There's a lot of knife channels out there. You know, um, I want to find a time slot, you know, that it'll come out and it won't overlap with anybody else's. So in any case, guys, uh, I wish you all the best. You know, these are difficult times we live in. If you can find a distraction in this nice little knife hobby of ours, then you go for it, my friends. All right. So we're going to put this guy away, get that, boom, right there, and uh, catch you later, my friends.